I'm delighted to have the president of the International Size Acceptance Association UK, Fatima Parker. Good afternoon, Fatima. Good afternoon, Jenny. You don't sound a day over 20. No, that's it's all the food yes. I eat, I think. <laughs> it's the liveliness and it's the energy and it's the beauty of your soul. Oh, the beauty. Now, is that what the International Size Acceptance Association, is that how you help your people? So we help them to love themselves, to respect their bodies and to look after it regardless of weight, age or colour. That's what we do. How do you and do that? We just um, teach them to respect and love their bodies and teach them that uh, um, the body is a program to know when it's hungry and when it's had enough. But because we go through all these dietings and these this is healthy and this is not healthy and so on, we lose connection and communication with our bodies. So we don't know when we are full because every time we are hungry, we just tell it, shut up, you're not hungry. You've just had your thousand calories and that's all. So when you say, I mean, have I finally, Fatima, found the very person I need to have next to me in my bedroom? <laughs> I mean, how? because it's obviously not something you can teach somebody overnight. No, no, no. We have a program that uh, we're working on in our, our branches in America and uh, everywhere. And we're bringing it into the UK as well. We call it health at every size, meaning that we care more for our health than our size. Uh, and if we're doing something wrong by overeating, and then we arrange that by learning how to eat properly and to eat the, th- the things that our body wants. And we, of course, teach our body that uh, well, this is good for you, not in the sense that it's going to make you fat or thin, but it's going to be healthy. It has vitamins, it has nutrients, and so on. Then uh, your body, if it goes into a different mode and it needs to lose weight, it will. How did you start this? I mean, Fatima, are you a fatty Fatima? I am, yes. So when... I am. So did the, you were drawn to this because you had a weight issue or because... No, it's because, I mean, I've, we have a weight issue uh, at these days at, at any size, really. If you're not a size double zero, you've got a weight issue. Yeah. This is, this yeah. is sad, you know. But uh, I was thinking all the time that I was fat, yes, maybe. I mean, at different stages, even when I was only about, you know, maybe half a stone more than, than my, my colleagues. Uh, but uh, the, the stigma, the insults, the bullying was hurting me and, and describing me. I was fat, yes, but I wasn't bad or lazy or ugly or, or, or an intelligent or unlovable or not loving and so on. And then when I started to study and, and through the Internet, I met and I read about other people. They were their doctors, psychologists and so on, and they had the same idea. So I thought, you know, I, I, I'm not that stupid. There are other people who have the same thing. And since then, I stopped dieting completely, and I started loving and caring for my body, whether it's fat or thin. But as long, when, so go ahead. Sorry, Jenny. Well, I was going to say, Fatima, how? I mean, I've seen your photograph, and you're yes. li- and, and in the same way that you'll compliment me, so I will with you, because you're a Thank very you. beautiful woman. How? Thank d- you. How do you start to accept a compliment like that when the rest of the world is calling you a fat person? Because uh, I just uh, strip fat from the fat. I have a skimmed fat, meaning that fat means only fat. I have adipose. I don't have laziness, ugliness, and femininity, and human, and so all the things that they put in with fat, you know, uh, like the the, the gay movement, they just, they're gay, that's it, we accept it, take it, you know, so that's it. We have fat, we have got, we are bigger. I mean, um, um, the the BMI says I should be... um, uh, no, uh, eight stone, but I'm probably 12 or 13, and that's fat. It doesn't mean that I've got three stone of, of a, a, a criminal behavior or, or bad behavior. And what, then even, go what, ahead, so, so let me ask you, when you see a government initiative like this, uh, yes. spending money on a, a really sweet little cartoon and declaring that 8 in 10 men will be overweight by 2020, how do people tackle that? You know, if it's about self-love and self-esteem, it's notoriously difficult to get a man to talk about how he feels about himself anyway how do you stop blokes from becoming obese what we do is we try and get the government to listen to us to say we are fatties and we know what it is 
And we've been through all these scare tactics. We've heard it all before. It's the same old, same old. And we've, bo- we've been on diets. We lost weight and we've put it back on. There is, a me- there is a mechanism in our body that dictates our set point and our metabolism. And the more we're stressed because we're insulted and humiliated, the more we get secluded and the more we eat and the fatter we get. This is one side from eating. And other side, there are so many environmental problems that cause the obesity and, and cancer and other diseases. And there are other causes that cause obesity, you know, like the, the middle-aged men, women um, and men. And you have the um, menopause and the andropause and, and the change and fluctuation in hormones. All these things have to be taken into consideration. Okay. We are all for exercise, all for healthy eating, but we are against uh, bashing fat people and, and, and criminalizing obesity. Thank you, Fatima Parker, so much. If you want to see this website, it's the International Size Acceptance Association.